Every sport that is practiced professionally has seen some of the most unique individual talents step into the spotlight. Yet, only a few have managed to separate themselves from the rest because of the unrivaled levels of success and dominance they reached during their careers. Names like Babe Ruth, Muhammad Ali, and Wayne Gretzky come to mind when there's a conversation about the greatest players that each sport has ever seen. And when it comes to basketball, history began to be written in 1984 when a certain player wearing number 23 made his professional debut. Michael Jordan has been the protagonist of movies, commercials, documentaries, and of course, of a legendary championship run in which he led the Chicago Bulls to six titles in eight years, with two three-peats and zero finals losses, while also being one of the greatest scorers in league history. Welcome to Courtside. Today, we'll talk about some of the moments that define Jordan's career and helped him become, arguably, the best player the NBA has ever seen. Throughout his professional career, Jordan was known as a fearless athlete that would take any challenge regardless of how difficult it might have been. His killing instinct and his competitiveness were among the traits that defined him during his years in the NBA, but this mentality wasn't something that he was born with. Before he was drafted in 1984, Jordan played for the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and if you only watched his first couple of college seasons, you probably couldn't even imagine that he would become an NBA legend. During his first season with North Carolina, he averaged 13.4 points per game and played within a system that favored team play and, although he was named as the ACC Freshman of the Year, he didn't look like the Jordan we would get to know with the Bulls, but all it took for that to change was a single shot. On March 29th, the 1982 NCAA Championship game took place between the North Carolina Tar Heels and Georgetown Hoyas, and in a game in which future NBA stars Patrick Ewing and James Worthy were also playing, Jordan would make the game-winning shot to take the title. He would later call this moment as the major turning point in his basketball career. In his second year in the NBA, Jordan would suffer a broken foot injury that would make him miss all but 64 games of the regular season, and without their young star, the Bulls would post one of the worst records in the league. Even so, by the time that Jordan had healed, they were still in a position to make the playoffs, and he wouldn't let this chance go away. Behind Jordan's play, Chicago was able to secure the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference despite only winning 30 games. A young Michael was glad to see his effort result in a second playoff appearance, but all of his hard work would be rewarded with a first-round series against the Larry Bird Celtics, one of the best teams of all time. The young Bulls were outmatched by Boston star power and experience, but MJ wouldn't go easy on them because of that. In what became a sweep, he made history by scoring 63 points in the second game of the series, the highest amount of points ever scored in a playoff game to date. One of the most athletic players in the league at the time, Jordan was known as a high-flying dunking machine that was able to score over almost everyone on any given night. His athleticism would not only prove useful during games, where he could abuse players on both ends of the floor, but would also make him one of the most entertaining players in the league and would earn him the nickname of Air Jordan. Thanks to his leaping abilities and the way he was able to control his body while in the air, MJ would receive multiple invitations to the slam dunk contest and would go on to win the 1987 and the 1988 editions. This last one is remembered as one of the most epic slam dunk contests ever, as Jordan would face all-time great and dunking specialist Dominique Wilkins. This matchup finished with Jordan taking home the trophy and is well remembered for his iconic dunk from the free throw line. As one of the greatest scorers of all time, Jordan took many shots, and some of them remain among the most iconic in NBA history. But back when he still hadn't proven himself as a winner, most of the shots he had taken so far didn't have any special meaning. During his first four seasons, the Bulls had only managed to win a single playoff series and were eliminated in the first round in their first three attempts. In the 1989 playoffs, the Bulls were matched in the first round against the Cleveland Cavaliers in a rematch of the previous season. And though they had defeated the Cavs the last time, they were seen as the underdogs this time. Hearing all the critics talking about how the Bulls would lose in the first round, Jordan took it upon himself to make sure that wouldn't be the case and, in Game 5 of the series, made a buzzer-beater, series-winning shot over Craig Elo that would be remembered simply as the shot. Throughout his first six seasons, Jordan had already won all the individual awards the league could offer. He had been named as MVP, as Defensive Player of the Year, as an All-Star, as a member of the All-NBA First Team, and had multiple scoring titles. But he still hadn't been able to make his team win a championship trophy, and for the past three seasons, the Bulls had been unable to defeat the bad boy Pistons and move past the Eastern Conference Finals. That would change in the 1991 playoffs as they were finally able to beat Detroit and their Jordan rules with the help of coach Phil Jackson 
and his famous triangle offense. Chicago would go to the NBA Finals to face against a more experienced Lakers team led by all-time legend Magic Johnson. After Game 1, things didn't look too good for Chicago, but Jordan would help his team change the series' momentum and had one of his most iconic shots when he changed hands in midair to avoid a block. The Bulls would win the series in five games, and Jordan, now a champion, would break into tears with the Larry O'Brien trophy between his arms. After winning their first title, the Bulls continued their dominance over the league on the following season and were able to improve their regular season win total to a then-record 67, while Jordan again received the MVP award. During the playoff, they made it through the tough series in the East against the Knicks and the Cavaliers and returned to the finals to defend their title. This time, they were matched against the Portland Trailblazers, led by Clyde Drexler. At the time, there was a debate regarding whether Jordan or Drexler was the better shooting guard in the league, and leading up to the series, the media made sure to make the most out of it. Knowing that, Jordan made sure to end the debate by scoring 35 points in the first half of Game 1, including six three-pointers, and after the sixth fell, he ran down the court while making a shrug. After six games, there was no more debating, as the Bulls had just won their second consecutive title. Following Chicago's third consecutive title, it seemed like no one could stop them on the court. But then, tragedy struck in the Bulls' star family. Jordan had been having problems with the media as they would often criticize him for his gambling problem. As the days passed, he looked tired of being a celebrity and, when it was announced that his father had been killed, he couldn't take it any longer. On October 6, 1993, he announced his retirement, shocking the whole basketball world. A few months later, he decided to pursue a baseball career, saying that his father dreamed that he did that. The Bulls would continue playing good basketball without Jordan, but they were no longer able to defeat the competition in the East when the playoffs arrived without their biggest star. However, the separation was short-lived. On March 18, 1995, after much speculation, Jordan announced his return through a two-words press release, which read only, I'm back. Michael's return took place during the end of the 1995 season, and while he was able to immediately make his team better, his body wasn't prepared to play basketball at the highest level as the Bulls would lose against the Orlando Magic in the second round of the playoffs. During that offseason, he would use this defeat as motivation to prepare himself to come back better than ever before and reclaim the spot that he thought his team deserved in the NBA hierarchy. The 1995-96 Chicago Bulls would go on to win a record-setting 72 regular season games, and Jordan would again win the scoring title as well as the MVP and the All-Star Game MVP awards. The Bulls dominated their competition in the East, taking revenge against the Magic in the Conference Finals and defeating the Seattle Supersonics in six games. The final game of the series was played on what would be Jordan's first Father's Day basketball game without his dad and, after winning the title, he would break into tears in the locker room while holding the trophy. After their fourth championship win, the Bulls were focused on continuing their dynasty for as long as it was possible, going into the history books as the best NBA team ever. During their next season, Chicago would again dominate their opponents through the regular season, but fell just short of a second straight 70-win season as they would finish with a record of 69-13. Jordan would also miss out on the MVP trophy, as the award was given to Utah Jazz center Carl Malone, but after returning to the finals, MJ and the Bulls were matched against the Jazz, and he was decided to prove that there was no player better than him. Chicago would win its fifth championship against Utah, and Jordan would win his fifth finals MVP trophy. But the most memorable moment of the series came in Game 5. With the series tied at 2, Michael would play despite having a fever and being dehydrated. He made the game-winning basket and then fell over Scottie Pippen's arms after what became known as the flu game. With an aging roster that suffered various injuries during the season, the Bulls were looking the most vulnerable they ever were with Jordan after winning their first championship. Chicago started its season with a mediocre record but was able to improve as the months went by and finished with 62 wins and the best record in the Eastern Conference. This time, though, they would face their hardest competition since the Detroit Pistons in the East, as the Indiana Pacers forced a seven-game series in the Conference Finals that they were minutes away from winning. But in the deciding moments, Chicago held through and advanced to its sixth Finals appearance. The Bulls were again matched up against a Utah Jazz team that was looking for revenge and they were close to getting it done. But in the deciding Game 6, Jordan would make a steal in the last seconds and made a shot over Brian Russell that would win the Bulls their sixth and last title and culminate his career with Chicago. Michael Jordan was a player that was capable of bringing six titles to a franchise that had never before made any finals appearances, and he would always come through in the most difficult moments his team faced. His talent and his dominant play are only comparable to those of players like Will Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the impact he had as a celebrity helped the NBA become one of the most popular leagues in the world.
His game made history and he will always be remembered as arguably the best player the league and the world have ever seen. But oh, we would like to know which one is your favorite MJ moment. Tell us in the comments. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, remember to like it and subscribe to our channel for more NBA content. We are Courtside.